Hi guys, I will explain the camba and the side slip angle uh, from camba stiffness to summary. Here I have a quiz for you. Uh, what is the correct description about a negative camber? A direction of camber thrust is the same as that of lateral force due to side slip angle. Direction of camber thrust is opposite to that of lateral force due to side slip angle. I explained the camber thrust with this picture in the previous video. E025. When we have a camber thrust due to camber tau sub y gamma, a normal stress due to tire load sigma sub c, and the camber stiffness c sub gamma, the camber thrust f sub y gamma is equal to the integral of tau sub y gamma over the entire area of tire contact patch. In the lower camber angle range, camber thrust is proportional to the camber angle gamma. As described in the equation number one, here a minus sign means the direction of camber thrust is heading to minus y axis. C sub gamma is called camber stiffness. Let's look into this in the next uh, slide uh, with its graph. As described in the equation number two, the camber stiffness is defined as the slope at the origin uh, where the camber angle is equal to zero. Here. Camber stiffness uh, goes different depending on tire structures. Uh, radial tires usually produce lesser camber thrust and moment than cross ply ones because uh, radial tires have a flexible wall compared with cross ply tire. This slide explains a uh, camber trail. Uh, let's think about the front left tire uh, with the negative camber on its right turn. As described in the picture, camber thrust is acting laterally ahead of wheel center along the x-axis in the horizontal plane uh, when tire is rolling. In the right picture, the distance d sub xr is called camber trail. A direction of camber thrust with the negative camber is the same as the lateral force due to side slip angle. This direction. The moment produced by camber trail is called camber torque. As expressed in the equation here, camber torque is equal to camber thrust multiplied by Camber trail. Camber torque can be ignored in the linear analysis of vehicle dynamics because the size of its value is very small compared with the self aligning moment due to side slip angle. As you can see in the picture, the directions of both forces of camber thrust and the lateral force due to side slip angle are the same. Uh, but the locations are different along x-axis, here and here. A camber thrust laterally x forward shift of d sub x gamma and lateral force due to side slip angle x backward shift of a sub x alpha along the x-axis. Uh, with respect to the center of tire contact patch. Uh, therefore, the directions of moments are opposite each other about the x-axis. However, the direction of resultant moment is the same as that of self-aligning moment because 
the camber torque is much smaller than the self-aligning moment due to side slip angle. This slide explains the camber arm. Uh, the local longitudinal deformation of a tire contact patch is wider here in the cambered side. Therefore, resultant normal force is shifted uh, to the cambered side as much as the distance d sub y gamma, this length. Uh, this distance is called camber arm. Consequently, camber arm produces the moment about x-axis. A circled dot uh, means direction of force popping out of screen. That is the direction of positive z-axis. Camber moment produced by camber arm is related to the normal stress distribution of tire contact patch. Uh, this moment is trying to make the tire upright. Let's think about the total lateral force due to side slip angle and the camber. Two pictures represent the total lateral force minus f sub y, which is the sum of camber thrust and the lateral force due to side slip angle. A left wrap is per tire load 4 kN, a right one is per 1.5 kN. Uh, the contribution of camber thrust is more distinct in the lower side slip angle range compared with the higher side slip angle range. Especially, this is true uh, when the tire is less loaded, like 1.5 kN. As you can see in the left picture, with high, higher, si higher tire load, 4 kN, Camber effect is noticeable even in the higher side slip angle range. On the other hand, in the right picture, camber effect is noticeable in the lower side slip angle range, but is not so noticeable in the higher side slip angle range as you can see here. The interval is very short to be discriminated. This picture represents the contribution of camber torque to the total self-aligning moment m sub z, uh, which is the moment sum of camber trail and the pneumatic trail. As you can see, in the lower range of side slip angle, the contribution of camber torque to the entire self-aligning moment is almost constant. The answer to the quiz is direction of camber thrust is the same as that of a lateral force due to side slip angle. Here we have a summary. The camber stiffness is defined as the slope at the origin where camber angle is equal to zero. Radial tires usually produce lesser camber thrust at the moment than by supply, by supply ones because radial tire have flexible wall compared with by by supply ones. Camber thrust is acting laterally ahead of center of contact patch along the x-axis in the horizontal plane. Direction of camber thrust with a negative camber is the same as that due to side slip angle. Camber trail is normally ignored because its value is very small. Resultant normal force is shifted to the camber, cambered side as much as the length of a camber arm. The, uh, the contribution of camber thrust is more distinct in the lower side slip angle range compared with in higher side slip angle range. If you watch the previous videos, you can easily understand upcoming videos. I explain the forward slip and the backward slip for the negative camber. 
Recently, I explained the mechanism of producing the camber thrust. The next video will be tire size slip part 11. I will explain camber on the road. Uh, you can catch the brand new video uh, by free description. So, what are you waiting for? See you at the next video. Goodbye, guys.